Okay, it is Tuesday. We are less than 24 hours from this bonanza of ridiculousness. And I got a lot of crap I gotta do today because I have all kinds of prep stuff we have to do. So I have to like wash all the sheets and I have to take a special like antibacterial shower tonight, like all of this random crap. But probably the most irritating part of all of this is that I have to spend all of today not eating real food. I have to be on a clear liquid diet today. So I can have, and it doesn't have to be like dye free, it can be colored. So I can have like apple juice, but I can't have orange juice. So anything I could in theory see through. So anything that's colloidal can't have it uh, for you sciencey people. So um, I get to have jello and water. I can have chicken broth. I can also have beef broth, but I'm gonna have chicken broth. Uh, I could have coffee, but I don't drink just plain coffee. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, the way I'm going to avoid getting protein headaches today is I'm going to be an old person, and I have Ensure, but it's Ensure Clear, so it'll be okay. I cannot believe this is what my life has come to. I'm drinking Ensure for all of my meals today. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Okay, so the good news is my blood work all came back, and I'm like smack in the middle of every range I'm supposed to be, so we're good to go. Also, finally know what blood type I am, so that's really exciting. Bad news, I am so hungry, I have considered gnawing off my fingers. Um, I can't, I, I, I keep trying to drink water to like make it stop, like try to trick my stomach and be like, oh, you're full, like don't even worry about it. Um, but it knows better, so now I'm hungry and I'm peeing fucking constantly. So this is a real hoot and a half, and there's still like half of a day to go. I would do unspeakable things for a cheeseburger right now. Oh my god. Kill me. Just I don't know how I'm supposed to sleep tonight. I just keep peeing and I'm starving. I don't, I, this is not, I'm ready for this to happen just so I can eat again. Like, can we just, we're just done. We're just done. Alright, it's dark and early. <laughs> Oh, dark. We should not be up this early. But, um, it's surgery day. We're on our way to the hospital. I am still starving, so I didn't sleep at all last night. So my stomach was like, like, all night. So that was a thing. My skin is all super itchy from my antibacterial showers because it's dry. I just want to scratch all of it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm bringing my guardian family with me. Check it. Check it. Figured that was a good, good support thing to bring. Um, still don't feel like I'm freaking out yet. It's usually when the IV goes in is when I start panicking. So we'll see what happens then. But for right now, it's like I still feel really calm. I'm getting there's a little nervousness in the back of my head, mostly because I've reached the point where I now have a bunch of irrational fears, <laughs> like. Right now, my greatest fear is that I will wake up and they will have to tell me that they had to change the plan. They either like found something different, they had to like take my ovaries, or they had to convert to an open hysterectomy rather than laparoscopic, or something like that. Like that right now is is what I'm freaking out over. And I know the likelihood of that is like ridiculously small, but as we've already learned, my brain doesn't always do the logical thing. So yeah, yeah, I'm really excited to fucking eat. Somebody ate breakfast in front of me. <laughs> Jerk. <sighs> She's been in surgery for uh, about a half an hour now. It's about 11 o'clock. So I have my, uh, my handy dandy little pager here for letting me know when things are going on and when I need to meet with a doctor. So she did great this morning, um, just about as well as I did. So I've been in hundreds of surgeries and everything for work, but uh, Still passed out this morning for about 10 seconds when they were putting the IVs in her. She uh, is not a huge fan of needles, let alone needles in her arm or in her hand. So you know, she was she was doing all right, but uh, when I saw that she wasn't enjoying it and was in a little bit of pain, it uh, hit me a little bit hard. So that's why my hair is all messed up from all the, the I had to put a wet rag on my forehead and everything to get me back uh, back up. So. But uh, everyone's good. Doctors are taking care of her, gave her a kiss, and sent her in for uh, her surgery. So everything should be all set. Yo, I look like shit. 
and everything hurts, especially when I breathe, because fuck all of this. The link went inside to go get my prescription for my drugs, and I'm just hanging out in the car. Oh, this is the fucking worst. They're, they weren't kidding about that shoulder pain with the gas that they inflate with. Holy fuck. And it like, oh, every time I breathe, I feel it in my diaphragm and I feel it in my shoulders. And let me tell you, when you breathe and you feel it in your shoulders, it's weird and fucked up. And I'm right now, I'm terrified I'm going to sneeze. I think I might literally die if that happens. Oh, whew, it's a thing, it's a thing. All right, I still look fucking awful, but I've had enough drugs that I don't care. Uh, I'm home on my couch, just hanging out. This is my little corner. Um, slept for what felt like forever. Turns out it was an hour and a half, so I'm fucked up. Um, had my my grizzly bear. This is family tradition. Um, this is the bear that everybody you you get when something bad is happening. So my mommy sent it to me, my mommy and daddy sent it to me. So I have the grizzly bear, I have my cute giraffe from Jeff, which was super cute. And Tucker snuggled with me. Um, Griff kept wanting to sleep on my stomach and we were like, no. So he went to the end of the couch and found it. But um, still kind of hurts breathing a little bit just because of all of the gas for the inflation. And when I stand up, it all moves back into the, the shoulder pain, which is just obnoxious, but. Um, ate a little something, which is good, and I'm keeping that down just fine, and I don't feel nauseous, so, so far, so good, or as good as it can be, anyways, I will be honest, I didn't think it was gonna knock me out this hard, which is stupid, of course it was going to, but I'm, like, stubborn, and I kept comparing this to, like, the last surgery I had to have, and I was like, I was fine after that one, it'll be okay, and I was like, bitch, you didn't have organs removed, what are you talking about, so... I'm stupid, I accept this, um, I'm gonna sleep some more. So it's Friday, surgery was 48 hours ago or something like that, I had to look at a clock. Um, not doing too fabulous, Jeff just had to go, he's actually going to the cancer center to pick up a new prescription for me because what they gave me was not strong enough and I kind of wish I was just a disembodied head right now. Um, the nerve block that was supposed to last 48 to 72 hours wore off around the 24 hour mark. And so I tried to supplement the pain meds they had given me with ibuprofen, which is instructions they had given me, and it was just not cutting it. So I called them and they made sure it sounds like there's nothing actually wrong, it's just that the stuff, my body just processed it too quickly. Um, so they're giving me stronger shit, so hopefully I can function at some point, because right now I can't even really breathe well like if I get I can take shallow breaths but as soon as I take a breath that like would actually use my diaphragm it just everything hurts and feels like it's pulling and is terrible so yay this is a uh, this is glamorous it's fantastic it's fun I'm lying just kidding hey what's up it is um I think today is the 12th, it's technically been 10 days since surgery. I'm doing okay. The problem is, is I feel pretty good, so I'm like, let's go do stuff. And, um, and nothing hurts when we're done, but it's really exhausting because my body's tired because it's trying to fix itself. And so it is 8 o'clock at night and I am going to bed. And that's after I took a nap this afternoon. I'm so tired. This feels so ridiculous. <laughs> and I get it. But at the same time, I feel like a pansy and it sucks. <laughs> uh, so good night. Hey, so it's been about a month since surgery. I just had my first post-op check appointment thing and figured since I'm kind of on the up and up, I'm I'm getting there and have kind of, I'm still a little fuzzy, but most of the hardcore drugs are out of my system. So I'm able to focus a little bit more, so I figure it was probably a good time to talk about surgery day itself, because like you guys saw leading up to it, and I think even like in the morning, uh, like of 
the day of, and then Low Link recorded something while I was under, and then you saw some aftermathy kind of stuff, but like what actually happened in the OR. Um, so I figured we'd talk about that, talk about how post-op stuff has been going, and yeah, just get you up to speed. Let's do that. How are you? You good? You good? I'm good. I have to be careful how I sit. You use a lot of abdominal muscles a lot more than you realize until you can't use them. And then things get difficult. But anyways. <clears throat> yeah, so day of surgery was tons of fun because it turns out that despite the fact that this was planned to be an outpatient procedure, everything was planned for it. Because it is a major surgery, they still have to treat me like I'm going to stay overnight, just as a precaution. So I got to go through the whole infection prevention procedure. That sucks. <laughs> it was not fun. So not only did I have to do my stupid shower with the dial soap in the morning, but then when they took me back to start prepping me for surgery, I had to do all of this other stuff. So I had to shove iodine up my nose, I soaked Q-tips in it, and I had to get all of it in there and shove that up my nose. So that was great. I had to brush my teeth with this weird antiseptic solution stuff. So I, I, they gave me one sponge and I had to rub all my gums and my tongue in the roof of my mouth. And then I had to brush my teeth and I couldn't rinse. So then my mouth tasted weird. And then I had to wipe down my entire body with these like really thick, like think of like the, the facial cleansing pad things, you know, like the makeup removers. Think of like really thick versions of that. Um, they had some weird, they weren't like a cleaner thing. There was something that like purposely like lays down some like kind of like antibacterial like barrier or whatever. Um, but they were, they were weird because they were like hot, warm and cool at the same time. And of course, and the pads were of course scratchy. So my skin's already itchy from the stupid dial shower and not being able to put on any lotion. And then I have this scratchy pad that leaves other stuff on my skin. They're like, yeah, you know, some people say it makes their skin feel itchy. So then like I was done with that and I just wanted to peel all my skin off. So that was great. So we do all that and I put on my super attractive hospital gown. They get me to bed and they give me a little oxygen tube. So they get me all set up in my stupid little bed and they're like, all right, cool. Uh, we're gonna start your IV now. And I was like, all right, I'm warning you. I don't, I don't do medical stuff. It freaks me out. And like, I can know logically that everything's fine, but that logical part of my brain, you guys have already seen this in other videos. Does it always win? And I was like, I really don't do needles. I really don't do needles. And the idea that there's gonna be a tube in my arm just, I, I just can't. Um, I'm like, the last time I had surgery, um, I went into like a full panic attack when they put the IV in. So that stuff that they give you, whatever it's called, before we go into the OR to make me like, kind of like not care about the fact that I'm going into an operating room, they had to give that to me like really early. And she's like, well, and she's looking at me like I'm stupid. She's like, I can't give you anything until the IV's in. I'm like, I know, I'm saying, once the, like, I'm gonna start losing it when the IV goes in, and I'm not going to stop losing it when the process of putting it in is over. This is going to be a continuous state of freaking out until I go into the operating room. So if there is a point when, between when you put it in and when I'm gonna go in, that you can go ahead and administer anything to me to, that's what they've had to do before. And I'm just, I'm just telling, I'm just warning you. And so she starts prepping the IV and she starts telling me about some of the procedures that we're going through for the day. And she's like, now because your procedure is robotic assisted, she's like, we like to have backup systems for everything because once the thing, once the robot is fully lowered over your abdomen, depending on what part of the surgery you got, there's gonna be various parts of you that we can't easily get to. So they're like, you know, you'll have two heart rate monitors on in case one gets bumped off and things like that. She goes, you'll also have two IVs and I'm like, what? Two, what? Two IVs? Yeah, so I'm gonna have an IV in each arm and I'm like, oh good, because I don't freak out enough with one, you're gonna give me a second one. Fabulous. So I was like, then you're definitely gonna need to do something. She's like, well, we'll see, sweetie, we'll see. So I was like, she doesn't believe me. <laughs> I'm a grown woman. I shouldn't have a problem with this, but I do. I'm sorry. So she starts putting the IV in. She's like, do you want me to do like, you know, put like a numbing cream in them? Like, it's not the pain. It's not that... I I know there is a tube coming out of my arm. 
that's it. So I was like, you want to put the Nottingham stuff on? Great. But it's not going to make a difference. So she starts doing the IV. And, and I have good veins. Um, so she starts trying to do the IV. And, and <laughs> by the time she gets it in, I'm a sobbing mess. There's another nurse who had to come in and like hold my hand to like help me calm down because I was like doing like the hyperventilating like can't catch my breath kind of thing. Um, and my whole arm is covered in blood. <laughs> so they're trying to wipe it off, but like they can't. Uh, <laughs> so there's like, when I, like three hours later when I was home, like not three hours later from them, but three hours after I got home from the hospital and I'm like napping on the couch and I look down at my hand and there's still dried blood all over it. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> blood all over my arm. And they get the one IV in and... The anesthesiologist comes by and he looks at me and he, then he looks at her and he's like, is she, is she okay? She's like, yeah, we just, just had a little bit of, you know, some, some high emotions with the IV. And he's like, did you give her anything? She's like, well, I haven't. And he's like, you should, you should give her, and then he named some drugs. He's like, give her, give her some of that and gave it a mouth. And, and so they put something in my IV and it like made it so I like relaxed enough. I could start breathing again, but it wasn't like, I wasn't in like, don't care mode. I was just like, okay, like, I'm just gonna stare at the ceiling. There's a blanket over my arm, so I can't even see it. I'm not even gonna make eye contact with the fluid bag. I'm like, just, just focus. So at this point, I've back, I've been back in prep for a little over an hour, and they had originally told Low Link that, um, that they were gonna take me back, and it'd be about 20 minutes, and then they'd be able to bring him in. So I'm freaking out because uh, there is something stuck in my face. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been freaking out because I have been without, I'm going through all of this and I have, I don't have my support system. And he thinks something's wrong <laughs> because it was supposed to be 20 minutes and now it's been over an hour. So they get the one IV in and then they bring him back. And so that helps, that helps with the calmingness with the IV. And I'm like, okay, everything's good. And he's making jokes. He's like, do you have problems with your IV? It's been a long time. I was like, well, here's the thing. We only just did the IV. I'm like, here's why it's been an hour. Um, so he's sitting there and they're like, okay, we still need to do the second IV. And the link is there. And he's like, he's like, I'll sit with you. Everything's fine. It's great. And they move, you know, they move him to the other side so they can get to, get to the other arm. And I'm starting to freak out again. And then I see Lil Link's face and I go, are you okay? And he's like, I think I just need to sit down. So despite the fact that he actually like for work goes into surgeries deals with cadavers, has seen like actual surgery stuff. Uh, me getting an IV was a different experience. And so now he's half passing out. So now there's two nurses in the room trying to like keep him from like hitting the floor. I've got one nurse who's trying to put my IV in. I've got another nurse over me being like, it's gonna be okay. It was, it was a fucking disaster. <laughs> oh my God, it was ridiculous. So IV number two goes in, low link gets resituated and he's fine and then they realized that I'm still panicking so they gave me more drugs and then I stopped caring and then it was okay so I remember being in the prep area and low light coming back and then I remember being in the operating room I don't remember the transition I don't remember going to the OR I don't remember that trip but I remember getting into the OR and like all the nurses like my oncologist is there and she says you know she says hi and how you doing and all of that and all of the nurses are introducing themselves. And I'm like, I'm not, first of all, I'm only gonna see you for another two minutes before I'm completely unconscious. And then I will not see any of you again. I'm like, I'm not retaining any information right now. I don't know how I got here, uh, but sure. Yes, hi, lovely to meet all of you. And all the staff is super nice. And they show me the little robot and I get onto the actual operating table. And I remember, but, and I'm making, I'm laughing because I'm saying I'm not gonna remember any of the nurses' names, but I do remember one of them because I very succinctly remember this one nurse introducing herself saying, oh, my name is Savannah. And I was like, Savannah, that's such a pretty name. You should tell everybody your name. And then I woke up in post-op. <laughs> like that's, that's what I remember. Surgery itself went really well on the, I spent it would take about an hour and a half. I was actually out in a little under an hour. Uh, apparently my, the one thing my body finally did right is everything was like textbook perfect, where it should have been, behaved how it should have behaved, and they were able to go in, get it out, and, and leave without, without too much issue. Um, they did, did get to do it, leave it as a single incision, it went next to my belly button. For anybody who's curious what it looks like, I'm gonna put a picture up right now. If you don't want to see, close your eyes for a little bit, and I'll let you know when it's safe. So, here it is. And like, it's not, I had a major surgery and I removed organs and that's the incision. Like that's kind of ridiculous to me. 
and now it is safe to look in case you had to look away. It's okay now. Um, it's really not that bad though. Like I'm squeamish about stuff and I'm just like, oh, like it's, it's one incision. I've got like a little fish hook looking scar next to my belly button right now. Um, not even sutured up. They use like, they do sutures on the inside and then it's like skin glue over the top of it. Uh, so I don't have to like, didn't have to worry about going and getting stitches out, which was great. Surgery didn't take all that long, but it took me a long time to wake up. I, my body reacts really oddly to anesthesia. Um, and also like, I'm a tiny person and I have a high metabolism and all this other weird stuff. So before, like after I was in the OR, they administered a nerve block to my abdomen and that was how they made sure I didn't feel anything there. It wasn't just like a numbing thing. It was like, it's the way they do like a shoulder surgery and they'll like do an injection up here and it numbs your whole arm. Um, same kind of thing, but you can do it for your abdomen, which I thought was crazy. There's like two spots that they do injections in and it's supposed to do a block for like three days. So that they do that and then I get knocked out. And I was in surgery for a little less than an hour and I didn't wake up in the first phase of recovery until two hours after surgery was done, uh, which is a long time to stay unconscious after a surgery. So I was asleep three times as long as the surgery was. When I woke up, I was right across from the nurse's station and I could kind of see a clock, but I don't have my glasses on. So I can, like, it's kind of fuzzy. And I'm like, I can't tell if it says it's one o'clock or if it says it's 12.05. Like, even though I'm super drugged, my brain is still coherent enough to be like, okay, well, the surgery was supposed to be like an hour. You went in at, you know, at nine. So I'm like, it, or, you know, you went in at 10, whatever it was. Yeah, you went at 10. I was like, okay, well, it was supposed to be like an hour. They make it 11. So I was like, so it's probably, it's probably 12.05 then. Like, that would make the most sense. No, it was totally one o'clock. <laughs> there was a whole extra hour in there. Um... And a nurse sees that I'm awake and she comes to ask me how I'm doing and I, I can't form words. I was just like, I could not, I could, I could nod, but it was like the idea of talking and part of it was my throat really hurt from the breathing tube. And it was just like, I can't, I cannot communicate. So despite the fact that I have literally six blankets, six heated blankets on me and heat packs on my abdomen, which is a funny story in a little bit. I'm freezing. I'm so cold. So they get more blankets and are like thinking about getting their like special like warming like suit things to like put on me um, because I just like I'm just like I'm just shivering and I can't stop. Um, but at the same time I'm super thirsty and they can't just give me water. So they so I'm freezing but they're having to feed me ice chips and I'm so buried under blankets I can't feed myself so I'm just laying down and having this woman <laughs> spoon feed me ice chips and it was just I was just like I feel so pitifully helpless after I was waking up they brought low link bag so he could see what terrible sad state I was in he brought me a cute little giraffe I named him Newton because that's what my drugged brain decided he should be named it got to a point where they're like okay well do you, you know if you're functioning now, we can take you to the second phase of recovery. I'm like, do you need to go to the bathroom? I was like, yes, yes I do. So, and you're like, why are you telling us this? And I promise this has, this has a purpose. Um, when I go to get up, I like, I can't. I have no strength left whatsoever. So even sitting up was ridiculously impossible. And I'm super drugged. So like everything's all wonky and woogity. And I go to stand up and they've put like some shitty hospital issued like giant underpants things on me with a pad in it because uh, they just had surgery in that area. There's bleeding happening. So I stand up and I can feel that and it's like, and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm like seriously like bleeding I'm like a little concerned because it just like it just felt so like it felt heavy and warm and I was just like fuck what am I what am I gonna do I'm like this is not good and I was like let's not panic it's probably normal it's probably fine and we go to the bathroom and that's when I find those hot packs I mentioned earlier they're on my abdomen my abdomen's numb I can't fucking feel anything so I didn't know they were there and they had just slid down into their shitty underpants and that's what I was feeling <laughs> were the, the hot packs that they had put on my stomach. So then I stopped freaking out. And then I'm laughing and Lolling's what's so funny and I'm explaining to him how I just completely thought I might be dying. <laughs> um, so figured out that thing. We managed to get me down to the second phase of recovery. They brought me some cookies. That was great. We hung out for a little while. 
thought I was gonna throw up because anesthesia ended up not. I said, I was like, they're like, are you okay? I'm like, I feel really sick. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And they're like, well, here, let me get you something. And so they hand me this thing. They're like, you can throw up in this. It's this little emesis basin that's like this big. That's it. And it's just like, and it's all rounded. So I'm like, if I throw up in this, it's just gonna like, it's just gonna sprinkler it out everywhere. I'm like, this isn't gonna hold anything. <laughs> Why is this what you've given me? And thankfully I didn't end up needing it. I didn't want to know what was gonna happen, but I was like, I feel like you should be, you know everyone's coming out of anesthesia and you know it makes people nauseous. I feel like you should be better prepared for that situation than handing somebody this tiny thing. It was, it was not gonna work. It was not gonna work. And then we pick up videos and stuff with recovery. I came home, slept on the couch. Griff was mad at me for a solid week. Probably longer than that, uh, because his favorite place to lay is on my stomach, and obviously he can't do that. So he just thought I didn't love him. I was like, you can lay anywhere else, you just can't lay right here! And he was just like, no, I'm gonna go to the end of the couch and pout. Uh, but Tucker was a good snuggle buddy, and my mom came to help take care of me, and that was great. Um, and she brought one of her dogs with her too, so I had three puppies to snuggle with, and my mom was here, and Link was awesome, and everything was great. Um, I guess I just had my one month, my first post-op check. Um, everything's going okay. I say okay in that the outside is healing really nicely, like, it's almost, the scab's almost gone, it's just, it's just a scar pretty much now. Um, inside is healing slower than it's supposed to, and so instead of a six-week activity restriction, I'm actually on an eight-week restriction, which sucks. Still, so no lifting of anything more than 10 pounds. I have to, I can still feel some things depending on like how I like get up and like sit up and sit down and lay down. Uh, lay, figure out how to lay down for that first week was ridiculous. I had to like, like sit by like falling and then I had to lean over this way and then roll onto my back. <laughs> like I couldn't just like sit and twist and just like, I couldn't lay down and just go straight back like this. It was, it was impossible. It was, they was ridiculous and forget getting up like that was i had to like routinely have low link like grab me by the shoulders like help me up <laughs> it was it was weird it was just really weird uh, i did the old person shuffle for a solid like two weeks where it's like i couldn't have a stride that was more than like three inches um uh, and it's just it was weird to give up so much control over basic tasks in my life um and just kind of be be on bed rest for the most part. Like, I, I could get up, but really shouldn't. It was just strange. Uh, I'll have another post-op appointment, uh, just to make sure everything's going well. Um, that'll be at the seven-week mark, so another three weeks from now. And hopefully I'll get the sign off then. I know they said eight weeks recovery, but we'll check it at seven. And if they say everything looks good, then I can... I'm not gonna, like, immediately go back to the gym and start bench pressing, you know, my own body weight or anything like that. Uh, but it would be nice, like, I can't, I can walk right now, that's all I can do. And it would be nice to be able to be, get on a bike, get on the treadmill, do some lifting, something. It would be nice to get the all clear for that. So, hoping that happens. We got the pathology report back on all the stuff they took out. So, everything they took out, so uterus, cervix, and the tubes, uh, they did uh, some testing on to see what might have still been hanging around in there and what, taking samples from like all the edges where we left things in to make sure that there was probably nothing left behind. I said probably because cancer is unpredictable! <laughs> Go figure! And as far as they could tell, I medically, I'm considered cancer-free. I'm considered as cancer-free as they can say. They can never say you're like 100% free because weird shit happens. Weird shit happens. But as far as they could tell, everything's gone. This should be done. I go back to doing regular lady appointments. Uh, regular pap testing, no more biopsies, any of that stuff. Um, I don't have to do any of that anymore. I'm just gonna do regular lady appointments. I have to do it every year instead of every three years, but just to make sure. And some of you are like, how are you having a pap if you don't have a cervix anymore? And it's just because they'll just do it at the, the top of that area, um, just in case there were any cervical cells that were left and it could have spread downwards. We did the surgery to prevent spreading upwards. And that'll get more internal and scary and ridiculous. This will just be like regular stuff that if anything were to resurface, they could just burn it off. So yeah, I get to actually close this chapter of my life, which is crazy and weird and awesome. Um, it's been a journey 
but it's nice that like it has a definite definite close now so yeah i have the post-op appointment in a couple weeks and in theory after that I shouldn't have to go back to the cancer center ever again. Which is sad because that means I don't get to see the therapy dog anymore. Because he was a cutie. He was a cutie. I'll miss the doggy. But I won't miss having to go downtown and go to the cancer center. So, yeah. I guess that kind of wraps up this little series. I mean, if there's any other questions that anybody has, I could always do like a... Like an AMA kind of video um, to wrap everything up if there's any outstanding questions from anybody. But... That's... that's it. Uh, I don't expect anything crazy from the other post-op appointment. It's just making sure everything healed up finely. And... out of uterus. So, no more... no more periods. No babies. No natural babies, for me. And... It's just moving on. Which will be cool. So... Thanks for going on this journey with me, and thank you guys for all of your support and well wishes and and everything. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, definitely a lot to be said for the power of positive thinking, and it was definitely something I relied on a lot, especially fresh out of surgery. So, hearts for all of you. Shitty hand hearts. And um, I guess I'll see you around uh, in other internet appearances and videos and stuff. Toodles.